Hello everyone and once again welcome to this special presentation of NCAA Division III Basketball presented by the PrepCast Network. Hello and everyone welcome once again I'm Sam Baker joined alongside Ashley Wright and we've got a rematch of the Slyak semifinals matchup from last year ready to happen again this time in the grant. Ashley we've got an action-packed matchup tonight between the Webster University Corlocks and the Fontbon University Griffins. It's the Battle of Big Bend. There's a lot of rivalry headed into this matchup. What do you think the Gorlocks need to do today to pull off the win? Definitely keep Elijah Rice of the Fontbon Griffins out of the paint. He's shooting 50% of the field so far this season and that's due to his easy ability to get down low and knock down some high percentage shots. He's the key to slowing down this Griffins offense, along with Caden Clark. That ball is knocked out of bounds and will head in the direction for Webster. Partially responsible for Webster's success, head coach Chris Bunch. He notched his 300th career win last time around against Spalding. The all-time winningest head coach in Webster men's basketball history. Coach Bunch has a career record of 300 and 220 in his 21st season as head coach. as a nice bucket there from Carl Moore Jr. to put the Gorlocks up first. So Coach Bunch has led his team to three SLAAC tournament titles, three NCAA Division III tournament appearances, and is named the Basketball Coach of the Year for the conference six times. 
we salute Coach Bunch and all of his hard work and his time spent here at Webster. As Marcus Becton's mid-range jumper is no good, ball is tipped, and Fontbonne will regain possession. Nice pass from number two, Caden Clark, the Slyak Player of the Week recipient last week. As that one is no good off the mark, foul will be called, and this one will head the other way for Webster. Great job by Marcus Becton, boxing out the bigger sullen chop down low. You'll get that call every time when you've got a proper box out. Over the back call on Solentrop. That's his first foul, and it's early in this game. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Solentrop, he tends to be in foul trouble. So, On the wing now, Coleman. Picks up his dribble, kicks it up to Wynn Brown, Jr., the senior guard from Memphis, Tennessee. Lost his footing there. And this one will head the other way. It looks like he might have tripped up either on the floor or on some water or something. That did not look natural. Absolutely. I thought the same thing. They didn't get anyone out there to wipe up the floor, though, so hopefully that spot dries quickly. Top of the key, Salantrop. Nice read from Clark. Mid-range jumper. That's good. Elijah Rice getting it done from the elbow. Fontbonne now with four points. That's what you like about Rice. He's so dangerous. He's able to score inside and take the ball outside a little bit, showing off that sweet jumper. Marcus Becton on the wing, finds Sykes. Sykes jacks up a triple, no good on that one. Nice rebound from Carl Moore. Wynn Brown Jr. working around the defense. Nice feed inside the cup. Scoring amongst the trees, 5-7. He was down there with 6-8 Sheck Theum of Fontbonne, and he was still able to get some easy two. J.R. Brown getting the job done. And his last time around, he scored 19 points off of eight made field goals as he is bodied at half court. He met with Kate and Clark. Both are fine. Boy, that was a shot. He came in hot on that hustle play. He did. It was almost like a defensive back <laughs> making a tackle. Great job by JR. Not making it easy for Caden Clark. He was a great player, too, for Fontbonne. Brett Wagner off the feed from Clark. Outside triple. And that one rolls out of bounds and will fall into the hands for Webster. Great defense there by Webster. It's rare that you see Caden Clark miss, let alone miss everything on a shot attempt. So Fontbonne will not run a press, but will instead run a heavily pressured defense man-to-man. -man. Sykes off the screen from Becton. Nice feed down low. Almost wanted Wynn Brown Jr. off the backdoor cut. Nice interception from Fontbonne. Wagner the feed down low. And they go in ahead and call the travel on Solentrop. Good defense by Moore Jr. down there with big Solentrop. Solentrop has the size advantage, but Moore Jr. playing some smart defense, backing off a little bit, causes Solentrop to lose his footing. When you're establ establishing yourself down low, you don't want to lean too much on your defender or you will end up kind of getting that chair pulled from under you. Becton guarded by Theum. Sykes trying to work around the defense. Brown against Clark. Brown driving, step back, jumper. No good off the rim and out. What a sweet matchup at that guard spot. Caden Clark and Brown Jr., they've got similar games. They love to drive, and they can also pull up for a jump shot there. Clark kind of getting the best of Brown Jr. in that matchup. And this will not be the first time that some of these players on these teams have seen each other. Obviously, with the semifinal match last year, Webster looking to take away another win. Fontbonne looking for some revenge as Carl Moore Jr. snags down the rebound. Coleman off the drive. Going up strong, gets his own rebound. Nice hustle play. Tries it one more time. Still no good off the mark. Fontbonne able to get that rebound. The nice pull up from Wagner pulls up the E break. And gets the bucket. Wow, what a stop there. E-break for sure. Talk about stopping on a dime. What a great bounce pass, too, by Clark, finding Wagner. 
trailing for that fast break. Nice move from Coleman, pull up jumper once again, no good off the mark. And Jason Coleman not afraid to shoot the mid-range jumper and not afraid to get inside the paint and grab rebounds. He is ferocious for Webster. Clark with the hand on Sykes. Sykes still playing close defense. He is unfazed. Yeah, that's that defense you like to see. Clark trying to rip through with the triple threat. What an excellent job there by Sykes. Unfortunately called for the foul there on the floor. But he's being very aggressive and kind of getting into the jersey of Clark. That's what you have to do against such an offensive talent. You have to disrupt their flow, and he's doing that just far, so far. A couple of substitutions here for Fontbonne. Adam Painter and Ethan Chatrin. We'll go ahead and check in. Wagner with a deep three. Offensive rebound for the Griffins. Clark to Theum. Nice spin around jumper for Sheck Theum. A sophomore from Belleville, Illinois, getting his first points of the evening. Fontbonne now up 8-2 to two here early in the first. Yeah, sweet turnaround jumper. Keeping the ball high, making sure no one is able to smack it out of his hands if he brought it down low and knocking it down. Jason Coleman with the quick slip up went ahead and said, all right, I'm done playing around. Let's go and play some basketball. Coleman driving on Theum, able to draw some contact there. And that will be Theum's first foul of the evening. Theum whipping after that play. He actually just signaled over to the bench, so we'll see if he comes out anytime soon. The pump fake from Sykes. Webster swinging the ball around. Becton nowhere to go. Picks up his dribble. J.R. Brown off the drive. Nice deflection from Theum. He is loving it already. Not hurt anymore. <laughs> he was just limping, but that type of swat. You're A-OK. -okay. Motivation indeed. Check Theum. Stands at a towering 6-8. As J.R. Brown pulls up from deep. No good. Carl Moore with the rebound. Jamar Sykes from three. Fouled on the shot and the bucket. Jamar Sykes, the second, the true freshman. Whistle is called. The tempers are flaring and the chirping has started. It looked like a tech has been called. I think that's on Sheck Theum, but it was actually Sykes that bumped into him after making that, that three. And it indeed was called on Sheck Theum. Way to persevere, Jamar Sykes the second. Brown was getting ready to shoot that check technical foul free throw. We'll see. That's a potential four point play there for Webster. Ashley, I can't say you knew it was gonna happen, but you knew it was gonna happen. <laughs> So Wynn Brown Jr. set to shoot technical free throws here for Webster. I believe the technical was called on Sheck Theum. He received the first technical. I don't know if there was another one called against Webster or not. We'll have to see if Fontbonne shoots free throws of their own. It looks like this ball might just end up in Webster's possession. Yeah. Got to believe that Sheck Theum said something after receiving that bump from Sykes, but it was really Sykes that just set that entire exchange off. And as now it's Sykes' turn to try and capitalize, but we'll see what happens. As we took a look at that one more time, what a great play from Jamar Sykes finishing through the shot, taking the foul. And there is not a drop of fear in that young man. And Coach Bunch calling in some quick substitutions here. Josh Luster will take the position of Marcus Becton. He will be in charge of guarding Sheck Theum when he checks back in. Javon Nugent also coming in for his counterpart, Carl Moore. And I believe I see number 14, two-sport standout Mark Moore in the backcourt for the Gorlocks. What a fantastic possession there for the Gorlocks. You get a four-point play, and then 
you've got Fontban having to sit down their starter, Shek Thiem. You talked about it. He's such a tree, 6'8". But you don't have to worry about him for the time being as he's now on the bench with that technical foul. And if you're Fontban, you can't let Webster get in your head early as that momentum will carry over. Great defense there from Javon Nugent right off of the bench. And there's nothing you can do there against Caden Clark. What a great move to the basket for the senior. And that's when you appreciate him most. Basically bailed out this Fontbonne team. They were getting deep into that shot clock. Almost turned the ball over on a five possession, five second call. But good job by Clark really taking control of that offense. Coleman kicks out to Moore. Just seven seconds to work. Javon Nugent now in the corner. Three seconds to shoot. The long range triple. No good off the mark. Painter pulling down the rebound. Solentrop backing down Nugent. Nice bounce pass inside, but that one is picked up off of Mark Moore. Great steal there for Webster. Luster swings to Moore. Moore, the step back, thought about it. Kicked it out again. There you go. Webster making the extra pass, moving the ball around the paint and around the top of the key a lot better than they have earlier in the season. Mark Moore off the runaway jumper. Off the glass and good. My goodness. The bank is open, and he was fading to his right side. Mark, Mark Moore kind of showing off some sharp shooting ability there. <laughs> That's a tough shot to knock down. You know, Ashley, you say sharp shooting. I say nostalgia. That is the exact shot that Mark Moore hit last year to send that game into overtime from regulation. He hit a monstrous three-point shot to once again send that game into overtime. Webster ended up taking the win as well off of a last-second shot from Stephen Hawkins, who shot it from right where Mark Moore was standing on that play. What a shot there. The nostalgia was coming in. I just had to let the audience know that we are watching a repeat of last year's semifinal match. Yeah, for sure. You know, Fabon has had some nightmares about Mark Moore and that shot, sending it into overtime, really giving Webster a chance to come away with that important win last year. So Fontbon still up by two, 12 to 10 here in the first half. Another deflection there from Mark Moore. That's two steals for the young point guard, Javon Nugent. Swings it to Luster. Luster works it to Moore. Moore nowhere to go. Had to give up a desperation pass. And Sullen Trump will pick up the steal. Another deflection for Mark Moore. Bodied by Javon Nugent. Two on two fast break. Mark Moore pulls up from three and is unable to finish. Nice hustle from Jamar Sykes. It just keeps on going. And right now it seems like Moore is a magnet for the basketball. Wherever the ball ends up, he's around it chaos on the court. Webster still working very well with each other, staying composed. Josh Luster jacks up a three. No good. Fighting for it is Nugent. And Fontbonne pulling away. Here goes Clark off the fast break. Turnaround jumper is good. Just unfair how well he's able to finish around the rim. I mean, he had a hand all in his face and still able to knock down that shot, forcing Webster to call a timeout. Just four points separate these two teams, 14 to 10. Fontbonne up by four. Coach Bunch calling a 30-second timeout here to quickly reset his offense. And so taking a look one more time, Mark Moore. Gosh, what a shot he had from outside. It's so difficult to make a three-pointer on the move like that, but even more so when you're in the air transitioning with defenders around you, man, that's got to be skill. And you know what? He doesn't just do that on the basketball court. He can do that on the soccer pitch as well. Wow, just a phenomenal athlete all around. So Coach Bunch will put out a speedy duo with Mark Moore and Wynn Brown Jr. in the backcourt. As Josh Luster, Carl Moore Jr. And Alpha Diallo will round out the remaining five. 
So Webster looking to answer here, 14 to 10. Carl Moore up top. Pump fake from Brown Jr. Still looking to work on offense. Just five to shoot. Mid-range jumper. Yes, sir. Great job by Brown Jr. Kissing it off the glass. What an excellent pull-up mid-range. Painter on the wing. Nowhere to go. Elijah Rice with a nice feed inside to Ethan Chatron. And Fontbonne now has 16 this evening. Great team basketball there on display by Fontbonne. Rice really taking and staying under control, making the right play, finding his teammate down low. Nice steal there from Caden Clark. He's going to take this one all the way coast to coast for another transition bucket. Caden Clark, he has the wheels and he has the shot, and that is a dangerous combo if you're a Webster Gorlock looking to make defensive stops. And he's leading all scorers right now early with eight points so far for the Griffins. Mark Moore, another pull-up three. No good. Nice rebound from Mark Carl Moore. And that one will count plus the bucket. So Carl Moore Jr. will head to the line for another three-point play. And he almost put someone on a highlight. He, you could tell he wanted to <laughs> dunk that ball home. Still able to get to the line for an old-fashioned three-point play potentially. No good on the mark for Moore. This Fontbonne will go ahead and take it the other way. Still just four points separating the lead. Wagner from three. Yes, sir. Brent Wagner with another deep three to put Fontbonne up 21 to 14 with just about eight and a half minutes left in the first half. And it's bombs away for Wagner. Once he knocked that down, you can hear the whole Fontbonne bench yelling boom. Great shot there. Confident shot by Wagner. Stephen Hawkins jacks up a three. That one is no good on the mark. Ethan Chatron going up strong. Can't finish at the rim. Nice rebound there for Diallo. Behind the back from Becton. Still working on offense. Long legs. Gets inside the paint and finds the bend of the cup. He's pressing that B button spin move to open himself up in the paint. Good move there by Marcus Becton. The screen from Benton. Fontbonne running a good motion offense. Elijah Rice pulls up from close range. No good that time around. Webster will take the possession. As we saw there, great defense to close out on Elijah Rice, a dangerous shooter next to Caden Clark. So far, Webster's been doing a really good job of collapsing the paint and closing out on shooters. But when you have someone like Caden Clark, who is at the top of the league in field goal percentage and scoring, it's hard to combat that. It truly is. Brown driving. Finds Diallo outside. Diallo takes it in himself. Swings it out to Moore Jr. Great defense by the Griffins, keeping their arms out, rotating, using their feet. Diallo, last second three. No good off the front rim and out. As Peyton Blair will pull down the rebound. Excellent defense there by Fontbonne. Forcing the Gorlocks to kind of put up a shot late in the shot clock. And there is a charge. Great defense by the Gorlocks to respond. And that one was called on number 11, Jaden Benton, the freshman. That's Alpha Diallo on the receiving end of that charge. Still able to bounce up. And Alpha Diallo is not such a small guy himself, standing at 6'3". He can be a dual threat in the forward and the guard position. He and Marcus Becton both have very similar playing styles. I really like watching them on the court because no matter how tall they are, they can always get the mismatch based off of their speed. And there's the bucket right there for Diallo. Alpha Diallo going to the line for one more. 
Great job by Diello. He was hopping up and down. <laughs> he couldn't contain himself about how open he was. Good look inside. Diallo able to knock down that easy two and get himself to the line. And what a feat it was for Marcus Becton. Seamlessly finding Alpha Diallo down low, splitting at least three defenders on that play too. It's not the pass that you want to make, but when it connects, boy, does it look beautiful. 21 to 19 with just about six minutes left here in the first half at the Grant. Win Brown Jr. reading that pass perfectly. Boy, he came in hot. He's got the wheels too. There are some speedsters he on the did. basketball court. And he's bothering Caden Clark. You can see the look on his face as he approached the sideline to take the ball out. Caden Clark and Win Brown Jr. have been going at each other for a couple of years now. They are no strangers to the point guard position in the Slyak Conference. They've been matched with each other for the past three years now. And they're both looking to close out their senior year strong. First free throw is good from Will Solentrop. The St. Charles native at the free throw line now for the Griffins. And he can't make the second. So one and two at the line for Fontbon that time around. Alpha Diallo off the kick and rebound. Webster setting up another offensive possession. Beckton driving strong, finds Diallo off the pass and they finish. Diallo taking it to the chest of Will Sullentrop. Great job down low. Well, that's what you want to do against a bigger defender. Take it to their chest, force them to commit a foul. And there Diallo was able to knock it down. And Marcus Becton will pick up his first personal foul of the evening. The reach in was called at half court. He wasn't ready for it, neither was Coleman. And the referees want to go ahead and call the backcourt violation against Fontbon. And Caden Clark, not happy about it at all. Yeah, they're saying Sullentrop is the one that tipped it to the other side of the court. Once Clark touched it, that's what they called back over and back. And now... And boy, Coach Thornhill's got to be careful. As he was following the baseline referee down his own sideline. They've got to get it in control if they want to get this game back quickly as a steal is picked up there from Solentrop. Right to the rack and denied. Nice insurance there from Elijah Rice. What a block there from Alpha Diallo. Caden Clark looked so peaceful on that drive. His head was up. He was not looking down at the ball once. He had perfect court vision. But right behind him came the block. And so that'll be another turnover there for the Gorlocks. That's a call you don't see much. He got called for a carry there. Brown Jr. did. And as good as a ball handler that Wynn Brown Jr. is, you do see the occasional travel call being picked up. He's very quick, and sometimes he'll move his feet just a little bit quicker than his hands can get the ball on the ground. As Brent Wagner's turnaround jumper is no good. Coleman turning on the Jets. Coleman spins, finds the rim, finishes. No, just off the front end. Wow. The rim just didn't want that ball. That was supposed to go down. Great move there, <laughs> deep in the paint. Looking at the replay, it looked like the ball almost went in the net and then bounced out. What a disappointing play there for Jason Coleman. That is somebody that you always see going to the rack and finishing. That is such a disappointing play for the young man, but he's going to get it back. We've seen him come back from many point deficits this season so far. Yeah, I was convinced that ball was going down. I don't think I've ever seen that. A ball go down that far and then come back out. Rice the bounce pass to Wagner on the wing, Solentrop. Rice hits the drive, goes ahead and oh, nice up and under from Peyton Blair. And a heads up play as he was heading out of bounds, throwing it off of Webster, keeping secure possession of that ball. So 
So Peyton Blair will go ahead and take a seat. Caden Clark on the inbound. Brent Wagner feeds it back to Clark. Top of the key, Elijah Rice. Bon in motion. Driving and finishing is Grant Hastings, the freshman from St. Louis, getting it done for the Griffins. Five-point lead with just under four minutes left. And the bench loving the pretty finish by the freshman. Here he gets called for the block. Number 15, Nate Jones. Drawing some contact there underneath the rim, and he'll go to the line for two free throws. Nate Jones out of Huntsville, Alabama. Started in JUCO at Wallace State Community College. Now make his, making his way here at Webster University playing Division Three basketball. Great story there. And Nate Jones has been a fundamental part of the Gorlock offense. He and Carl Moore Jr. are so interchangeable with each other just off of their height alone and a little bit of their playing styles. Nate Jones and Carl Moore Jr are both very aggressive down low. You see Nate Jones still fighting for the rebound. Almost got the deflection there. Nice job by Elijah Rice to sneak his way in there and collect the insurance. Again, that's what contributes to his 50% field goal percentage. Elijah Rice is always somewhere around the rim ready to finish. Webster looking to answer 28 to 21 here in the first half. Diallo drives, finds an easy lane, gets the bucket off the front of the rim. What a pretty Euro step freeing himself up. He's putting on the moves early in this first half. The Webster offense never looking truly frazzled. At times they do get excited, but they don't look like they've been making as many careless mistakes as they had in previous matchups this season. As Nate Jones goes and <laughs> puts on the defensive showcase, he's letting them know that they can't get around him. He is, he is. And Sullentrop, they're really getting in his head. He's looking a bit sloppy. The footwork just isn't there so far throughout this game. And Webster really honing into that game plan, making sure they, again, pull the chair from under Sullentrop. He's relying on that defense to kind of post up a little too much. Sykes, the ISO with Rice. When Brown Jr. swings it to Jones. Brown off the picket fence set by Coleman and Nugent. Coleman pops out from three. Nate Jones, dribble drive, right hand. No good, nice rebound from Nugent. Boy, he came in and corralled that. Another rebound for Nugent and the bucket, finally. He just wouldn't be denied. The Webster Corlocks are just so strong. They're all big and muscular for this team, and that's what translates to them being able to crash the glass so well. When Javon Nugent gets positioning, you better believe he's guaranteed a rebound. Strong defense, but the foul is called. Javon Nugent saying he went straight up. Referees disagreeing. I think it was the body there by Nugent. That led to the foul call and a trip to the line for the Fontenot Griffins. So no good on the first free throw from Painter. So far both teams shooting 50% from the free throw line this evening. Uh, second one is nailed. So Webster once more looking to try to turn things around here in the first half. When Brown Jr. pull up jumper is no good off the mark. Fontbon in transition. Clark one more time down low. And the foul. Caden Clark. What a superb job moving around the defense. He is unstoppable tonight. He let them hear it. He let out a little roar after converting on that three-point play. He is so fearless coming downhill. It doesn't matter who's in front of him. He's looking at that rim. He's ready to score. So that free throw is good off of the spin-around layup. Javon Nugent called for the foul on that play. 
And Webster once again finds himself down by seven. Nugent nowhere to go. On the wing is Jones. Sykes pulls up from the corner. No good. Nugent with the board. No good that time either. Another offensive rebound. J.R. Brown pump fakes. Dishes. And that three-pointer will not count anyway. Shot clock violation for Webster. Again, the Griffins rotating perfectly on defense, using their feet, having their hands out wide, not committing a foul, forcing Webster again to go deep into that shot clock. And sometimes the selfless plays will lead to those unforced errors that you want to make. J.R. Brown had an excellent look at the free throw line for a mid-range jumper went ahead and dished it off to his teammate because he had a better shot at a three-pointer. That's just the type of team that these guys want to operate with. They're going to give up the ball to other shooters on the team. Speaking of shooters, Brett Wagner. Let him know, big fella. That is another shot for number zero, Brett Wagner. He's got seven points this evening. He trails right behind number two, Caden Clark, the senior, and we've got a timeout on the floor. So 34-25, Fontbonne with a nine-point lead over Webster here in the first. And we've got to say, it has been closely contested. No matter how far the lead has gotten, Webster's been able to come back slowly and bring the thing within five at points. Ashley, what do you think Webster's done a great job so far of doing this first half? So far, Webster has done a great job of drawing fouls. We've seen them convert on four-point plays and, of course, three-point plays. They've been very tough in attacking the rim, and they've been crashing the glass very well, too, being relentless. We just saw an example of that by Nugent. I mean, I think he corralled three of his own rebounds before finally converting down low, and that's been translating well for the Gorlocks. Only down nine points as we wrap up the first half. Shot clock is off. Fontbonne with a three possession lead over the Gorlocks as Webster looks to score one more time. Top of the court, Diallo. Webster swinging it around top of the key. Brown Jr. just four to shoot. Brown Jr. drives, took a step too soon. And they're gonna call another travel on the senior point guard. Disappointing because that shot would have counted too. Yeah, it would have been really nice. Side step was pretty, but unfortunately took an extra step. Now there's one second left. I don't think Fontbonne's going to look to do anything with it. But we'll see. Nice defense there from Jason Coleman to end out the half. Fontbonne with a nine-point lead over the Gorlocks to end out the first half here at Grant Gymnasium. And we are going to try to grab head coach Chris Bunch over here at the headset to get a quick halftime interview. And he is making his way into the locker room, so rain check on that interview. However, what a superb accomplishment for head coach Chris Bunch, capturing his 300th win against conference rival Spalding University last time around. Coach Bunch is truly a character. I love seeing him around campus. It's always a smile and a hey, how you doing whenever you see him. <laughs> and that type of energy is infectious. It, it, whoever you come across, you can't help but smile <laughs> when you interact with someone like that. Absolutely. So that'll do it here for the first half of action at the Grant. Folks, don't go anywhere. We've got more NCAA Division III basketball coming your way in just a few minutes.
once again, thank you for joining us. Sam Baker alongside Ashley Wright. This is PrepCast Basketball. This is NCAA Division Three Basketball presented by the PrepCast Network. And before we get things started here for the second half, just a quick scores update from around the conference. Greenville University is on top of Principia, 57-41. to And we will continue to give you updates from across the league as they happen to unfold. So Fontbonne starts things off here at the second half with the first possession. All starters except Sheck Theum are out on the court. That one rolls up and over the rim. Or the backboard, pardon me, and into the hands for Webster. Instantly, Fontbonne looking to put the ball into Kane Clark's hands. He led the Griffins in scoring in that first half, coming away with 13 points on three of five shooting. The Gorlocks will definitely have to stop him as we enter this second half. And then on the Gorlock side. Nice deflection by Jason Coleman. What a play there on defense. Way to get back. Carl Moore Jr. elevating. And no good on that time either. This one will roll out of bounds and a foul. And I believe that is called on Elijah Rice down low. Contact with Carl Moore Jr. This one is called on the floor, so Webster will inbound. On the Gorlock side in that first half, they were led by Alpha Diallo with seven points. He's actually coming off the bench. So big scoring boost for the Gorlocks off the bench deep into that rotation. Wagner pulls around the defense and finds the bottom of the net. Brent Wagner now with nine points this evening. He sits right behind Caden Clark, who has 11. So Fontbonne still up with an 11-point lead, 36-25 over the Gorlocks. Marcus Becton pulls up from mid-range, can't get it to fall. Rebound by Rice. The three-on-three. Banks it off the glass and then nice finish at the rim for Solentrop. Great job by him staying under control. We've seen a couple possessions where Solentrop had the ball in his, in his hands and was just kind of moving too fast. There he was able to kind of center himself and finish strong. Dangerous long court pass down low is caught and finished by Adam Painter. What a play by Fontbon. They are absolutely loving this hot start that they've had out of the gun. 40 to 25 with a 15-point lead over the Gorlocks. Ashley, this Fontbonne Griffins team has started out hot, and they have not looked back since. What have they been doing so well, not just in the second half to start, but in the first half as well, to hold the dominance that they've had over Webster? Yeah, definitely. They haven't been frazzled on the offensive end. Webster has been playing some good defense, putting themselves in front of the Griffins, but... As I mentioned, the Griffins really centering themselves and taking control, making sure when they get around the rim, they're taking advantage of such close shots. I mean, as I mentioned, Caden Clark. Also, Elijah Rice, he's been cleaning it up <laughs> for a number of his Griffins teammates around the rim. So that's what they've been doing so far and able to establish themselves, get out to an early lead. Both teams shooting just about 50 and 60% from the free throw line. Fouls have been called, but they've been very evenly sided as both teams have not had a free throw advantage one way or the other. So we'll see what type of lineup Coach Bunch will put out on the court out of this timeout. Looks like Brown Jr., Sykes, Coleman, Becton, and Moore Jr. will be the five out of the timeout for Webster. Wagner, Clark, Rice, Painter, and Solentrop will round out the five for the Griffins. One thing to note, too, we're pretty even in the turnover column as well. Fontman only notching eight turnovers, and Webster with nine turnovers, so keeping an eye on that, too, who's ever... Who is able to win that battle. Nice pass fake there from Becton to throw off the defender. Had an easy lane, but pulls it back out. Becton elevating. No good that time around. Wagner picking up the board. 
overshot for his teammate Clark, and this one will go right back for Webster. Yeah, he was looking for an outlet pass, and normally Caden Clark is <laughs> basically down the floor by then, but just want to slow it down a little bit. Carl Moore Jr. driving strong, wraps around the defense. And Elijah Rice had a foot out of bounds. So once again, Webster with another opportunity to get a bucket. Jamar Sykes responsible for the inbound. Webster setting up the box play. And deflection off the foot of Painter, I believe. Nice IQ play there from Jamar Sykes to get it five more seconds. Coleman drives baseline, nowhere to go. Swatted out by Sullentrop, and they're going to go ahead and call a foul on the big fella, and Webster will take it out from their own sideline. Sullentrop got aggressive on that play right there. He almost had the rebound. It looks like he still wasn't done with it. As Carl Moore Jr. bodies the big fella, can't finish at the rim. Fontbonne pulls down the rebound. Great positioning despite the miss by Moore Jr. Caden Clark pulls up from deep. No good on that one. The no-look pass is intercepted. Jamar Sykes read that play perfectly. When Brown Jr. almost slipping up on the referee there. Look out below. Dangerous feed there once again by Carl Moore Jr. Can't let that ball get too far away from you. Coleman back feed to Becton. Coleman five to shoot. Spins around. Nice up and under. Can't finish at the rim. And Fontbaum will take it the other way. Boy, Jason Coleman looking like his hometown hero, John Morant, finishing <laughs> at the cup with the up and under. I wish some of these buckets would go in because what a highlight play that would make. Yeah, that would have been awesome. But Webster kind of making it making it easier for Fontbonne on offense. We haven't seen many play calls offensively for Webster to start this second half, and it's just allowing the Griffins to stand still on defense. Solentrop looking to go to work on Moore. And that was deflected out by a Gorlock, and it'll stay here for Fontbon. Josh Luster and Alpha Diallo check back in for Webster. Javon Nugent also making his way on the court. So Webster working with the same backcourt, but wants to put in a little bit of a smaller lineup. So Luster and Nugent will run the post. Nine times out of ten, when you like to go smaller, you want to outrun your opponent. And with the Griffins having such a larger lineup, that might prove to work. Kind of get some fast break points up on the board for the Gorlocks. And trying to get out in front, Webster has a lot of dual threats on the court right now. Alpha Diallo, Josh Luster, Javon Nugent, all of these guys can play the two or the three position, maybe even the four for Javon Nugent if you're looking at a mismatch. As Jason Coleman goes up strong and finishes, that's his signature shot. And he is begging for a foul underneath. There was lots of contact there. There was a hand directly <laughs> almost on his face. <laughs> Not in his face, on his face. But somehow he still came away with the two. Brent Wagner finishing at the rim, getting around the defense. Nice closeout from Alpha Diallo. As Fontbonne. Still holds on to this lead, 42-27, with 15 and a half left in the second. Around the world for Webster. Luster spins, finds a lane, off the glass and in. Nice finish for Josh Luster. Good job by the Gorlock, setting themselves up down low. Almost every shot attempt so far has come from within the paint in the second half. Painter finds Wagner on the wing. Webster spacing out their defense, going more of a zone, trying to collapse down on that paint as Luster will get called for the foul, and Wagner will go to the line to complete the three-point play. And that's the thing about a zone. When you don't rotate properly, you find yourself trailing, and when you try to make up for you almost every time end up committing a foul. Great job by Wagner going up strong. 
Bon Bon has been reading the defense all night long as we've got another timeout on the floor. Webster down 44 to 29 here in the second. And taking a look ahead at the schedule for Webster. They will face Greenville at home on the 11th at 7.30. Followed by a two-game away streak against Westminster and Eureka. And so a lot of conference opponents will be popping up for Webster. They're going to have a bit of a shift. As we ring in the new year, we also ring in the conference opponents. So this is the time when we start to analyze the offenses from Greenville and Spalding and Eureka and Blackburn, all of the teams that have such a hold on this conference. And actually, I might even be able to argue the Slyak Conference has one of the toughest and most competitive basketball conferences in the nation right now for Division Three. And again, that's an arguing point. But by looking at what we've been able to see tonight so far from both of these teams, I believe that the Slyak Conference is undefeated as far as playing style in Division Three. No one can match the effort from these guys and what we're seeing tonight. What are your thoughts? Yeah, for sure. We see it on the men's side and the women's side. Neither team's really able or willing to put their heads down. We see that both teams have honed into being able to, you know, keep themselves in the game and trying to knock away at – at g gapping leads really that are created by the other teams but the Slya conference is really tough and each team forces their opponents to really play at a higher level so with that free throw that will complete the three-point conversion from Wagner. Brett Wagner now with 14 points this evening. He is six of eight from beyond the field. And he leads the team in rebounds as well with six. Nice steal there from Solentrop. Elevating, chased down by Wynn Brown Jr. and the foul. What an amazing effort by Brown Jr. Standing at 5'7", but still disrupting Solentrop enough to send him to the line. What a smart play there. And I could be mistaken, but I did read somewhere that the Division Three level is really coming down hard on those fast break fouls. Usually if the lane is open, and Sullentrop had a wide open lane, there was no defenders back. If a defender were to come down and make an intentional foul, it would be upgraded to a flagrant foul because of the unnecessary contact at the rim. The officials and the NCAA view fast breaks layups mm -hmm. as just two easy points, get it done, and get back on defense. So I'm very surprised that Wynn Brown Jr. did not get called for something a little bit more intentional just due to the contact alone. So once again, Webster looking to answer back. They have not seen a lead once this game. As Javon Nugent looks no. to get things done, trapped in the corner on the baseline. And when that happens, it's almost like a three-on-one. When you have two defenders and a baseline defending you, nowhere to go, you get trapped. It's hard to find outlets. Interesting decision by the Griffins to go ahead and elect to put on a full court press. Can't do it at the rim for Javon Nugent. Defense being brought out by Sheck Theum, who is back in the game since receiving that technical back in the first half. Nice pick up on the steal from Jason Coleman. He's going to get it back on the fast break. Almost had it, but just slipped out of his hands. And you got to be frustrated after that one. Yeah, another opportunity by the Gorlocks, but Fontbonne just, they're able to go step for step for this team, no matter the type of personnel that the Gorlocks put on the floor. We noted it. They went smaller to possibly try and go faster, but the Griffin's not faced by it. Good steal there again from Alpha Diallo. That's two back-to-back -back interceptions in the paint. And what an unlikely spot to grab a steal. No contact once again on Jason Coleman's drive as Javon Nugent will snag a whistle underneath and head to the line for two free throws. And they're talking to Sheck Theum over on the sideline. 
He, we haven't seen him since he's received that technical foul early in the first half. And with Sullentrop having two fouls now, maybe three, I think that foul was called on him earlier. He just hasn't been notched yet. He might be coming in. And good on that free throw. In the game now for Webster. Number 14, Mark Moore. In for J.R. Brown. As Wagner will control the pace of the offense. Nice bounce pass to Clark. Clark driving and looking. Puts his shoulder into Nugent. No good on the shot, but they'll grab the offensive board and finish. Off the glass for number 25, Will Sullentrop. Excellent finish. Big boy move, putting the ball on the ground and going up very strong. Luster flashes up top. Diallo running the baseline. Moore with a flash of his own. Nice pump fake to get Wagner in the air. Coleman wants to drive the cross court to Luster. That three is no good. Different look defensively for the Griffins. It looks like man-to-man, -man, but they're leaving Sullentrop in the paint, kind of guarding that rim. Excellent, excellent closeout from Mark Moore off a three-pointer from Hastings as this one will go the other way for Webster. Or no, pardon me, this one will stay here for Fontbon. They called that one out of bounds. It looked like Alpha Diallo was ready to inbound the basketball. Wide open in the corner, Hastings. No good, one more time from deep. Nice rebound from Jason Coleman. Coleman takes things coast to coast. Spin move is caught. And he'll earn a trip to the free throw line. Caden Clark called for the foul on that one. That'll be his first foul. And Webster really do it really doing a good job at shutting Caden Clark out in this second half. He's been held scoreless so far for almost the first eight minutes. Carl Moore Jr. back in. Josh Luster will get a Gatorade break. Jason Coleman converts on the free throws. Kanban's largest lead of the game is at 17 points, 48 to 32. Here in the second half, Webster needs to answer quickly if they want to get this game back into their control. On the wing, Wagner. Clark on the baseline, down low, finds Rice. Back outside, Clark. Close range shot, no good from Hastings. And Fontbonne gets it right back off the steal. Nice behind the back pass to Rice. Unable to finish at the cup. And Webster will go the other way. Great contest there by Sykes going straight up. Really, really battling Rice at the rim. Not many people win those battles. And then he comes down and knocks down a three-pointer for the Gorlocks. Cutting that lead to 13 points. Nice three-pointer there from Jamar Sykes. His first of the game, he is one from one from beyond the three-point line as we've got a kick ball and an inbound plane coming up. You love to see a complete sequence again. Sykes really meeting Elijah Rice at the rim, coming down and then knocking down a three. And kind of shifting this momentum now for Webster. Fontbon isn't as vocal as they were to start off this game and entering the second half. Hastings is denied, but the foul is called. And it looks like Carl Moore Jr. had his forearm over the ball, but they might have seen more contact underneath. And this will earn Hastings a trip to the line at the free throw. Yeah, questionable call there down low on the block. I think that was all ball despite it being his forearm. Still no skin contact by Moore, but. 
Carl Moore Jr. now with three personal fouls this evening. As Fonbon will be the first team to 50. They are up 50 to 35. 49-35, pardon me, with just about 11 minutes left. It's hard to see when the scoreboard updates itself off of a made shot. Nice swing around to Nugent. Unable to hold on to it, but that is deflected out and last touched by a Griffin. Nugent off the inbound. Driving middle of the paint. Finds an easy lane, gets his own rebound and the foul. So Javon Nugent will now shoot two free throws. A lot of free throws this half for the Gorlocks. Definitely, so. and that's a good way to slow the game down. You stop the clock and free points. So good job by the Gorlocks really drawing those fouls on their offensive possessions. And back in for the Griffins, number 34, Sheck Theum. And we'll see what he has to prove against his matchup with Carl Moore. Something to keep an eye on is Theum's three fouls. So Carl Moore Jr., Sheck Theum, and Grant Hastings all with three personal fouls. And with just 10 and a half minutes left, those hustle plays are going to have to be crucial. Bon, bon working their way inside the paint. Nice strip from Alpha Diallo. The go-ahead pass to Jamar Sykes. Nice finish at the rim for Sykes, taking it smart and not getting the crowd hype with a dunk. What a way to get easy points and on the board quick. Yeah, sometimes players can fall victim to being a little too flashy. Good job by Sykes, just getting the easy two, as you mentioned, cutting this lead down to 10 points. Caden Clark, wide open look. No good off the front rim. Sykes, another rebound. Excellent defensive adjustment, too, by the Gorlock, selecting to go to the 2-3 zone. They're forcing the Griffins to take jump shots, and they're a paint team. So we'll see how that adjustment goes throughout the rest of this game. Mark Moore with a deep three. That one was off the mark, and so Fontbonne will have another opportunity to increase their lead. Back up top, Wagner. See him on the baseline. Clark trapped at the mid-range there. The switch from Diallo. And an easy bucket once again for Caden Clark with the left hand. I'm not sure why Alpha Diallo made the switch on that play. It looked like they had a perfect man-to-man -man opportunity. There were no mismatches. And I'm wondering if that affected the play at all. Yeah, maybe he thought that they were still in that 2-3 zone and he needed to rotate. But he didn't have the help that he thought he had on that back side. Nice hustle there from Jamar Sykes to follow his own shot. There he goes. He picks up the steal. Hard work pays off. And he'll get another trip to the line. He fell kind of awkwardly. And he'll get up and be all right. Boy, with that type of fall, you always got to ask yourself, was that his ACL? Yeah. No, seriously. Just the way he fell, as you mentioned, awkwardly and landing on his leg. It's good to see him get back up. So once again, nice finish at the rim there for Jamar Sykes. That was two plays ago off the transition bucket. That free throw is no good. Theum pulls down the rebound for Fontbonne. Caden Clark on the wing for the outlet. Brent Wagner, 14 points, six rebounds, and a block. He's been leading the way for the Griffins so far this evening. 
As they've got a body, but a deflection from Diallo. Grant Hastings said, I'm not worried about it. I'm going to throw another one, and he converted. Yeah, sometimes those deflections allow your opponent to kind of gather themselves and go back up for a second shot. Hastings taking advantage of that. In the corner, Hawkins. Cross court to Diallo. Sykes, the step back. The finish! And he has come alive for the Gorlocks in the second half. Sykes doing it on both ends, too. He's been playing some great defense and being rewarded on the offensive end. So that shot will bring the Griffins lead to just nine here with about seven and a half minutes left in the second half. The Webster bench finally coming alive with the energy that we've been yearning to see. Steal from Wynn Brown Jr. Smart decision to pull the ball out, waiting for his teammates. And Webster with the reset. Hawkins driving. Kicks it out to Brown. Brown with the three. Bang! Wow, what a great shot by Brown Jr. You could argue that that was a potential four-point play. When Brown Jr. Fa not fouled on the shot, but bodied rather, able to finish. That's two times that we've seen two Gorlocks, two separate Gorlocks convert on a body three-pointer. And boy, they are making the toughest shots out there tonight. Nice deflection, Carl Moore Jr. Alpha Diallo working in transition. Kicks out, Win Brown Jr. One more time, yes sir! And the shift in momentum headed the Gorlocks way. The entire crowd saw that one go in. <laughs> you just saw a big gasp and a excited let out once he knocked that down. Confident jump shot there by Brown Jr. The contested three is made. Fontbonne now just 53 to 48. Only five points separating these crosstown rivals. Back-to-back -back triples for Wynn Brown Jr., a shot that he is not known to make, but in the clutch moments, comes up strong and finishes. Talk about not only being a leader as far as the qualities of leadership present, but being a scoring leader as well. He can just make buckets, and that's what makes him such a threatful shooter on offense for the Gorlocks. Yeah, he's almost catching up to that leading scorer in Sykes. With that three-pointer, he now has 11 points, trailing Sykes by one who's sitting at 12. Fontbonne's largest lead of the game was at 17. Just about six minutes ago earlier in the second half, 48 to 31. Since then, Webster has slowly chipped away at the lead and they are now just within five of the Griffins. Webster out hustling the Griffins on defense. They've got nine steals compared to Fontbonne seven, <laughs> along with three blocks to their two. So Webster is getting back on defense. They're making stops, but they've got to convert at the net if they want to continue to chip away at this lead and get momentum back into their hands. So on the court for Webster, Sykes, Hawkins, Brown Jr., Coleman, and Moore Jr. As that one is corralled down by Hawkins, nice feed up to Sykes. Going up strong and finishing is Jamar Sykes. He now has 13 points, this 14 points this evening, and leads the Gorlocks in scoring. If you're Webster, you have to be very happy with your most recent defensive possessions. The way that they've been able to force Fontbonne to take outside shots and kind of get out of their offensive zone of getting into the paint. What an excellent job by the Gorlocks. And another forced turnover. The Gorlocks just keeping it going. Hawkins, nice bounce pass to Moore inside. Good finish off the glass. Wow, just such momentum for Webster right now. Only down one point now. And you hear this gym is getting louder and louder. A 
Elijah Rice kicks it back out to Wagner. Wagner had a deep look at a three. Feeds it to Theum. Theum no good off the glass. Solentrop grabbing the rebound. Hawkins has to fight for it. And he's got it. Transition opportunity for Webster for the lead. Yes! Wow, great shot by Sykes. That almost didn't even hit iron. He was ready for that three-pointer. He knocks it down, and now he gets the lead for Webster. Almost five minutes left in this game. Webster up 55-53 to 53 against the Griffins. 17 points for the freshman. Jamard Sykes, the second. Have yourself a day, young man. What a performance we've been seeing out of this young man so far. 17 points, leads the Gorlocks, has been hustling on both ends of the court, is four of five from beyond the arc, has three steals and five rebounds. Once I, Like I said, talk about getting your fingerprints all over the stat column. We love to see players who aren't just good shooters, but they get back on defense, they get steals, they work in transition, and they just look like they're working hard. Yeah, we noticed it earlier when he went up against Elijah Rice at the rim, how fearless he would be throughout this second half. And Sykes just really turning it up for the Gorlocks, leading them to catch up not only to the Griffins, but to take the lead off of his three-pointer and 17th point. Wow. So back-to-back -back steals has allowed the Gorlocks to score 18 points off of turnovers. <laughs> They are double digits in steals, and they've got three blocks to add on to that. Only 14 turnovers tonight for the Gorlocks. So there are five minutes left of action here at Grant Gymnasium in Webster Groves, Missouri. The Gorlocks, for the first time this match, are up by two. 32 of the Griffins' 53 points have come from in the paint. What a great job by the Gorlocks to adjust defensively, get into a 2-3, protect that paint, and hold the, the Griffins at 53 points in order for them to take the lead. Excellent, excellent coaching there. Rice, the Hezzy, denied by Carl Moore. Wow. And that's what a 2-3 zone does. It allows your big man to rotate. He has the help that he needs to recover. More able to swat that shot without committing the foul. Another steal for the Gorlocks. Hawkins working on the transition. Pull up, jumper. No good off the back rim. Fontbonne diving for it. That's going to be an easy jump ball call. And it's going to stay with Webster. The key so far has just been that defensive adjustment by the Gorlocks recognizing where most of the points were coming from for Fonbon and making the in-game switch as needed. Will Sullentrup with the excellent defense down low. Is that going to be another steal for Webster? No, it's going to stay in the hands of Fontbon. Great hustle there from the Gorlocks. They are not giving up yet. Holy cow. Driving is Hastings, and the foul called on Diallo. That will be Alpha Diallo's second personal foul this evening. Webster with 12 team fouls so far this matchup. And Moore doing a good job of staying out on the floor, too. He has three fouls. He came into this game with foul trouble. Wagner knocking down a much-needed three for the Griffins, and they're able to pull right back in front by one 56 to 55 now as we approach four minutes left in this second half my 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 we're in for a treat to end this one and although they're not on their feet yet you can expect everyone in this gymnasium to be on their feet as we approach the four four minute three and a half minute mark here in this matchup coleman mid-range catch and shoot no good off the mark webster with the offensive rebound hawkins thought about it Win Brown Jr. for three. No good. Carl Moore Jr. Two rebounds. The foul. And let's see if they're going to call the bucket. I think they called the foul on that first shot attempt. Yeah, it looks like they did. He's going to the line for two. 
And that's Sullentrop's third foul. So now he is kind of at risk. We'll see if Fatman leaves him out on the floor. Sullentrop and Shekviam both have three fouls, so both bigs in foul trouble for the Griffins, and that allows the Gorlocks to attack at will. You want to, you want their bigs to commit that fourth foul, and that's just what we saw on the Gorlocks' last shot attempt. That triple is no good from Wagner, and stopping the transition play is Brent Wagner with the foul. That was such an IQ level play right there from Wagner, stopping the transition bucket as you had two of your fastest guards, Wynn Brown Jr. and Jason Coleman on the run, ready to score. Smart play there from Wagner. Yeah, absolutely. Had, if he hadn't made that foul, he would have saved those two easy points. We'll see if Brown can still knock them down at the line. Wynn Brown Jr., 11 points, two rebounds, and an assist. Also has a mark in the stat steal column as well. And he's Webster's best free throw shooter for a reason. 12 points now for number 12, Brown Jr. Two for two that time around for Wynn Brown Jr. As Webster now has a three point lead over the Griffins. Clark drives the baseline, nowhere to go. Nice deflection from Wynn Brown Jr. And the Griffins trying to utilize the short corner. Normally that works in a 2-3, but the Gorlocks are rotating so wonderfully. There's no open points on the floor right now for the Griffins to make anything work. Hastings receives the inbound in the corner. Clark, nice feed down low, and that is going the other way. And that's an easy call. Every time on defense, he was definitely set. Solentrop kind of running over the Gorlocks defender, and that is his fourth foul. He will have to be extra careful with just under three minutes left in this second half. If you're the Gorlocks, I'm looking to attack Will Solentrop and getting him out of this game. Nice play there by Jamard Sykes. Draw some contact off the double team, and that will be... The final foul for Fontbonne to give. Webster now at the line for the bonus free throws. Off the back rim and out. I know that rebound didn't count, but man, did Rice get off the ground <laughs> for that one. <laughs> 18 points for Jamard Sykes, the second. As Webster now leads Fontbonne 60 to 56, a four point lead, their largest so far this evening. Just about two and a half minutes left of action here in the second. Long pass sent over the sideline. Webster with another opportunity to increase their lead. And an unforced turnover. This gym is coming alive. We're starting to feel the rumbles in the bleachers. Coleman guarded closely by Wagner. When Brown Jr. picks up his dribble. Top of the key, Diallo finds Coleman off Coleman's foot and into the hands of Fontbonne. You hate to see that. And a jump ball is called underneath. Jamar Sykes seamlessly wrapping his hands around to grab the ball, but the arrow possession will stay with Fontbonne. And we've got another timeout here. Coach, Coach Thornhill wanting to talk this one over with his team as they are down for the first time this evening, 60 to 56. 
with just over two minutes left of action here at the Grant. What an exciting one this one has turned out to be. What thought, what we thought was looking like a 20 point or more blowout has turned into a very tight game with just only a couple minutes left of action. Yeah, Webster really being able to force turnovers from Fon Pon and again, that defensive adjustment has been key here in that second half, keeping Fon Pon from being able to score at will in the paint as they were doing to come into the second half. We talked about it, almost half of their points coming from within the paint and just the way the Gorlocks have defended the rim coming in here at the second half has been the tail of their four point lead so far. Font Bond from the baseline. Bounce pass to Rice. Clark ready to get it. One pass and away. Ball is deflected. Another deflection. Clark denied at the rim. Alpha Diallo. Jason Coleman off the break. Flushes it down. And there is the time for style points. He went up with two hands and brought it down so hard. And now this gym is erupting. Nice defense from Carl Moore. Fighting for the rebound is Rice. More contact against Coleman. And we'll see what the referees call on this one. I think there might be a warning on the Griffins bench. We'll see. Oh, a technical foul was called. Yeah, there was a technical foul called on the Gorlocks. So now we've got Wagner at the line with the Griffins down four points. And so Jason Coleman will pick up a technical foul. I'm not sure was what it, happened there. Was though. it because he flopped? I don't know if they're calling flops as technical fouls. He didn't flop. I think Rice definitely there was contact there. We'll see here on the replay what happened exactly. There's the slam dunk. Wagner is good on the first technical free throw. And he will only shoot one. Webster takes this one out on the sideline. Alpha Diallo can run it. He does not have to stay put. And it'll be an easy inbound for Webster. Coleman working off the press. And right there took one step too much. And it'll go the other way for Fontbonne. A little too excited there, trying to hurry and break the press. But if you're the Gorlocks, you have the lead. There's a minute and a half left. You can eat, some, eat up some of that clock. Wagner from three. Yes! This game is unbelievably back and forth. Wagner has been here all along for the Griffins. That's 21 points now for Wagner. What an amazing three-point shot there. Brent Wagner, 3 of 5 from beyond the arc this evening. He has been on fire for the Griffins. And it looks like the momentum has turned right back around. As Elijah Rice almost had his hand on it. And Webster will take it the other way. Clark putting a little too much on that pass. Under a minute left here at the Grant. And we are all tied up at 62. The fans are starting to get on their feet, and it is clutch time, baby. Fontbon still running a heavily pressured press defense. Diallo's got to get it across the timeline. Brown Jr. receives it. Driving inside the kick out. Sykes for three. No, his foot was on the line. And that would have counted. Oh, man, you've got to know where you are on the floor. Sice has been the hero so far for the Gorlocks, but unfortunately out of bounds as he caught that ball. Now there's 
Almost 30 seconds left in this half. Just about 11 seconds to separate the shot clock and game clock. Sykes still playing heavy pressure defense. Gorlock's not giving this one up. Nice closeout. The three. No good off the front rim. And we've got another foul called on number 12, Peyton Blair. Wow. And so another technical free throw here. This time, Wynn Brown Jr. will be in charge of shooting. And that one's good. That's interesting. <laughs> That's a very interesting call. Well, that shot just put Webster up by one point. It's 63 to 62. 20 seconds left. The shot clock is on, though. Separated by like a tenth of a second, it looks like. Rice driving, gives it up to Blair. Blair, no good on the shot. And, like we've a got a, on Rice. and we've got a foul called underneath on number three, Elijah Rice. Brown Jr. and Rice both went for the ball. It looked like the possession might have stayed with Fontbonne had J.R. Brown not have dove for it and drawn the contact. So he'll go to the line here to shoot two free throws. And this will be an opportunity for Webster to gain at least a two possession lead. And who other than your best free throw shooter taking a trip to the line with four seconds left in this game, up one. What a great run by the Gorlocks despite how we finish here today, the way that they were able to rally after being down by almost 20 points in this one and taking a one point lead when it matters most. Sykes really coming up big for the Gorlocks too in this second half, both on the offensive and defensive ends. So Ashley, four seconds left. Your coach bunch, you're in the huddle. What are you telling your team right now? I'm telling them to not foul and protect the ball at all costs. Right now, obviously time is on their side. They've got a one point lead and I'm hoping to pass it in to Brown Jr. He's the best free throw shooter on this team. If he takes a trip to the line, I'm very confident that this lead could be extended by the Gorlocks and forcing Fontbon to have to take a three at the most if there is a trip to the line by Brown Jr. Both teams, once again, shooting fairly even with each other from the charity stripe tonight. Webster is 12 of 21, shooting about 57%. Not bond with not as many opportunities, but a little bit more closely contested with a higher percentage as they've gone seven of 11 from beyond the free throw line tonight. And there's the second buzzer. The referee saying, all right, let's go. We've got five seconds left. <laughs> let's wrap it up. <laughs> and now Theum enters the game for the Griffins. So they're looking to get some size on the floor just in case Brown does miss this free throw. No good on the first for Wynn Brown Jr. With so much to prove and so little time to do it, Webster needs to convert. Second free throw is good. Timeout called by Fontbonne. You almost knew that timeout was coming immediately <laughs> once the ball went through the rim. So Fontbonne will need a three-pointer to take the lead. They need a two to send this one into overtime. Obviously, put the ball in Caden Clark's hands. Let him make a play as he's so used to doing for the Griffins. The 
If I were Coach Bunch, I would make sure Jamar Sykes, Wynn Brown Jr., and Mark Moore are all on the floor together. They can run a very smooth backcourt as far as defense goes. Mark Moore with three steals this evening. Alongside Jamar Sykes with three of his own. In this type of situation, you want speed, but you want height and defense as well. You want guys that can hustle and get anywhere on the court and anywhere uh, during the play. This is going to be a last-second shot opportunity for Fontbonne. And you better believe they're going to feel confident in shooting a three or a two. Brent Wagner will most likely be in charge if it is a three-pointer to go for the win. He has been hot tonight from beyond the three-point line, shooting three of five from beyond the arc. And rhyming with that, Caden Clark will be your best bet on the inside as far as points in the paint are concerned. So Coach Thornhill will put out Theum, Clark, Sullentrop, Wagner, and Rice. Coach Bunch wants Brown, Jr., Sykes, the second, Diallo, Moore, and Hawkins on the court to close things out. Elijah Rice will inbound it for the Griffins. Webster still playing heavy defense. Clark off the inbound. Last second shot. And he is fouled at the Fontbonne hash line. And he tried to get a shot up. But I don't think, I think they're calling it on the floor. He will be inbounding the ball. I think there was a foul to give. Yes, there was. So he will be inbounding the ball on the sideline. Very smart foul, too, there by the Gorlocks. Now there's one second left. And that's much tougher to work with than four. So Webster had a foul to give. That was a correction earlier when I said that both teams were in the bonus. Only Webster was in the double bonus at the time. Fontbonne with more than 10 team fouls. And like you said, what a great play there. What a heads up play by Jamar Sykes to grab the foul before the act of shooting to save three free throws that could have potentially put Fontbonne in the lead with just two seconds left of play. This is just one of those times where you have a game where everything is going right. Jamar Sykes is having one of those games for sure. One thing that Jamar Sykes does extremely well is playing with the pressure. He's able to put all of it back behind his head and focus on the present moment. He's never worried about how many turnovers he has. He's never worried about how many possessions or shots he misses. He's always engaged and he's always locked in and I love seeing that. So here goes Fontbonne, two seconds left, off the inbound. Wagner for three. No good. And still, Webster on top, 64 to 62 in what was a thriller of a matchup. Wow, what a come from behind victory for Webster. Again, honing into that defensive adjustment. They came out in the second half in a 2-3 zone, really limiting the amount of paint shots for the or Fontbonne Griffins, forcing Fontbonne to take outside jump shots, which they're not as comfortable with, and that proved to be the difference maker here tonight. And so across the league, just an update, Principia also took the win over Greenville University today, 94-91, to in what was a very high-scoring matchup for the Slyak rivals. So Jamar Sykes the second, our player of the game, finishing with 18 points, six rebounds, an assist, three steals, and a block. He put his fingerprints in every stat column, and he had himself an evening. He was one of the main contributors to a very powerful and efficient Webster offense that stayed consistent this entire game with that momentum picking up more so in the second half. For Fontbonne, Brent Wagner pulling in 21 points, finishing 8 of 12 from beyond the field, 3 of 6 from beyond the three-point line with six rebounds, a steal, and a block. And so that will do it here from Grant Gymnasium. I'm Sam Baker, joined alongside Ashley Wright. We'll see you next time, folks. Have a great one.